Chris and I just got to the warehouse and uh, as you know, we had to put his car outside and sadly, one of the windows wasn't able to roll up. I tried hooking up his battery real quick and it was dead and we didn't have any other batteries that were working at the time. And since his battery's in the back, we couldn't get jumper cables back there. But luckily, I just got this mini jump pack power thing in here. Uh, a lot of you guys have been telling me to get one of these for the longest time. Uh, if you guys are interested in something like this, I'll put the link of where I got this thing. Uh, but right now, we're gonna go test it out and roll up his window so at least we can, uh, you know, keep the rats out of there <laughs> hopefully yeah and also my dad's been working on this thing a little bit um i think uh we have some i don't know i don't even know what's going on with this thing but anyways uh this is the first time you guys are seeing under this hood again this is a 1950 mgtd this is a real one not a replica like these two over here uh i really like this thing color scheme is interesting but i really like the olive kind of colored interior steering wheel super cool kind of like vintage and thin um but you want to test this thing out yes sir yeah we'll see uh this is these you're gonna have to uh climb through the back okay how do you turn on the lights i don't know yeah so this thing's pretty interesting so this comes with a bunch of different stuff honestly like i could take this on the plane charge a bunch of different stuff i mean four uh usb ports and everything and then it comes with a bunch of stuff for a bunch of different uh basically devices but i don't know we're back here. I've actually already used this thing once for the Vic because uh, that battery we just left it hooked up and I think it has uh, something that's draining it. Just before we were filming, uh, we got a new one of these things. What did you call this? Uh, the Gimli Glebo. A new Glebo thing and then also some new more solid uh, trans mounts and then you also have yeah, the motor, motor mounts mount. as well. Um, but you said these are just like polyurethane yeah, or something. and then these are shorter so they lower the engine so lower center of gravity, kind of cool. Other than that, stiffer is better, right? And yeah, but the, well, I wouldn't say stiffer is necessarily better, but uh, lowering it, I mean, the thing is, if you got to buy new ones anyways, which we had to because we ripped one of them on the way out, um, or it might have been already ripped, I don't know, but uh, either way, we had to replace them, so we might as well just get upgraded ones anyways. Let's see. There's nothing really going on with this thing. I'm going to be working on this thing today, just exclusively kind of the front end there, but first thing, we're going to go uh, roll this window up. One of the windows already started going down. Right. Look at that. All right, good? Yeah. There's no much shit in here. I didn't think there was that much shit. Just throw it back in here real quick. So now what we're doing right now is basically I'm gonna hook up the trailer to the Escalade and then we're gonna take Chris's transmission, we're gonna put it in the back here, we're gonna strap it in there, we're gonna to go to auto parts store, spray it down with a bunch of brake cleaner uh, and just try and get all the gunk and stuff around there. I guess uh, that's something that a lot of people do whenever they pull the transes. And uh, we're gonna to go to a car wash, spray it down real quick and that way it's nice and clean to put it back in the car. Hold on, hold on. So we're back at the shop. Uh, we got the trans all cleaned up. I'll just show that to you really quickly. Um, it doesn't look much different than it did before, but I, we just got a lot of the like main grime in there. And the big concern was that there was loose pieces of metal and everything inside here from uh, whatever had happened inside here. And you can actually see, we replaced this piece inside here because this, I don't know what it's called. What, what is this piece called, Chris? Throw up bearing alignment shaft. We had to replace this because the clutch was in fact uh, installed uh, backwards. And so when we tried to start it, it started for a super short period of time. And I guess during that period of time, it actually fused itself to the clutch. So uh, we're waiting on a new clutch and basically we're gonna throw it all back together and hopefully uh, the, you'll do it the right way this time. Yeah, friction welded, perfect dimes onto the clutch. Yeah, so uh, we just replaced that. Uh, everything's cleaned up. You can see, there, now you can see a lot more yeah. how much more clean that was because there was a, you know, probably a, a I mean, main thing, there's metal shavings in there. In there from 
whatever welding happened friction well and from this thing being pulled yeah, out being with pulled the out, motor so. so that was the whole reason why this trans was so hard to pull out of the motor is because we actually had to rip this off of the trans and so these four bolts were just basically holding the trans and the motor together because uh, it was just all like fused together so um, not really too big of a mistake but you live and you learn and I'm sure you won't be doing this again so See, the thing Whatever. is, the clutch said gearbox side, but it was in German. So, of course, I can't read Deutsch. All right, so today's been pretty much really random, and I figured I'd show you one more thing that I don't think I've filmed yet, or I might have talked about uh, previously. But uh, we have our air cooler that we're going to be using for Oil this cooler. car. Huh? Oil cooler. What did I say? Air cooler. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're not boosting this thing. I meant oil cooler. Uh, this is actually from an FC RX-7. This is what I've seen that people use, or at least this is what I've seen that is uh, basically a similar shape to what I want and also has uh, both of the lines coming from one side. So uh, we're gonna be using this on this car. Uh, obviously these lines aren't gonna work. Um, I got this from a friend, Rick Phelps. You know, oh my shout God. out to him. Oh God. <laughs> All right, anyways, so that's gonna be going on the front of the car on top of the lip and everything. Um, and then I also have this. Alex Dew gave me this. He gave me some lines for an oil cooler. Um, I don't know if it's gonna fit. It should be similar. Uh, if anything, we might just have to change the AN lines or get something else. But uh, basically, we have the oil cooler set up. Um, and then I think we're probably gonna have to buy something in order to actually make it work because this car, I think I'm actually gonna hook it up and everything. There's, uh, you know, I'd rather it be functional, uh, unlike the Miata. The Miata uh, doesn't have it hooked up if you didn't know that, uh, but that's mainly just because I wanna be able to have the accessibility of being able to take it off the whole bumper um, and it being routed through the headlight, it just doesn't make it very easy. Uh, like let's say, uh, you know, something happened and I need to be able to take off the bumper and the lip in order to get on a trailer or something like that, or a flatbed, uh, I'd be pretty shit out of luck um, and we just have oil all over the place. Anyways. Um, yeah, this is pretty cool. You might have to get a new one just because it's just kind of beat up, but at least we have this one to be able to mock everything up and it'll get painted black and I don't know, maybe it'll be okay. I'm not sure. We'll probably put it something like this. It'll have to be cleaned up. Um, yeah, I'll just keep going. What, what did you ask? I said, just why do you need an oil cooler? Because I don't think the car needs it. Oh, no, it's all just basically style and we're gonna do almost the same exact thing as the Miata. We're gonna put it right here on top of the big lift that we're gonna build. And uh, basically same exact thing where the oil lines are gonna come around and up into there and we'll just drill some holes for the lines in there and uh, it'll go up to the, the oil filter and hook into the oil system and all that. Um, but I think this is okay because I'll still be able to take off the lip without taking off the oil cooler and that's why we'll actually hook this one up on like the Miata. I'm curious. Is this gonna be sturdy well, enough for that big ass lip? Yeah, so I'm actually gonna hook it to this. Oh, okay. So, um, I'm probably gonna weld uh, trailer receivers to this, and then I'll have the male and female receiver. So all I have to do is basically pull the, the primary pin, the secondary pin, just like a trailer hitch on either side, and then the whole thing will come out. So it'll be super sturdy, because imagine, you know, if it can, one can pull it, 7,000 pound trailer, two is definitely gonna be able to hold up whatever, you know, 50, 60 pound lip. Um, so I'm gonna actually weld it directly to these things. Um, and so that's gonna be good. But yeah, this is a little flimsy for now, but that's because there's no bolts in here and there's also not uh, the bumper bolt in here. So that's why all this can move. But once it's all bolted in, it's very sturdy. So it's gonna be like a quick release lip kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's because it's gonna be so long and I don't know how low it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be like somewhere around there off the ground. And, uh, but even with it being, you know, having this long of an overhang, any type of incline is gonna be a, a problematic. And so I figured this way, you know, I can just get under the car, pull some pins, pull it out, and we can like, you know, set it on the roof or something. Um, so that way I can at least get into venues and, uh, you know, up trailers and stuff like that. But and do these have a front bumper or is the lip gonna be No, so like I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put the bumper back on. We have the bumper over there, mm -hmm. uh, the front bumper, but we're not putting on the rear bumper, obviously. Um, yeah, we're gonna put the other one on. The reason it's off right now is because I've been finishing a lot of this stuff off. You can see that down here is pretty clean on this side. It's pretty close. The other side still has uh, quite a few uh, things that need to be done. But right now I'm gonna lift up the hood. We're gonna grind this down real quick, probably with the DA and then slap some Bondo on there. Yeah, I never really thought about the 
I guess the mechanics or the engineering or the front end. Because yeah. I just assumed yeah. like, oh, it's all like, Well, whatever. the thing is, everything else is going to be, you can lift up the hood a little bit. Oh, like, pull it. Yeah, it's pretty much the only thing that's going to be an issue when I drive because this car is really not going to be that low. That's the beauty of flares. You can pretty much put them where you want your... Yeah, and exactly, you know, since we have to modify them anyways, it's just going to we'll make them fit the car. Because you can see it's not that low right now, and that's pretty much where it's going to be. Like, this is pretty much my set right now. Is there anything special they do for the side skirts on these cars? Um, what do you mean special? Like any, you know, like any crazy side skirts. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be probably six to eight inches long. So they're going to match the flares, basically. Uh, yeah, so it kind of bumps up to the flare. Everything kind of flows together. So this thing will be up here, you know, whatever, it's going to have to fit up there. But the main point is... Oh, that's going to be sick, man. And I'm like here, right? See, we're gonna bring this out here and you know, let's say that's up there see how this is out mm -hmm. whatever eight inches from the body the side skirt will bump up against this and will almost look like it's flush against here and it'll come out from here and go down and it'll be angled a little bit so it looks like we have a little bit less ground clearance and uh, it's kind of rocket bunny inspired oh uh, well this is this style was Japanese, yeah. very early. And so this is pre Rocket Bunny by probably like 20 years. Um, and then the front, the front one needs a lot of modification. But if you've seen the video, a lot of people were asking about how this is pretty short here. Um, not only are we going to have to clearance for the bumper here, but then the lip is going to go all the way up to here. So it'll look like it's contained, you know, but the lip will be to here. And then the lip will look like it kind of like bumps up to here. So that's kind of how all that's going to go. And then the front of the side skirt is going to angle out almost exactly like the Miata. You know how it comes here, angles out. So it doesn't need to bump up to anything here or, you know, contour to anything. You know, come out here, straight back, and then a contour to the uh, shape of the flare. Um, anyways, I'm going to take a DA to this. See how ugly this is? It's like disgusting. That's because we just kept adding to the top and it just kept overflowing and stuff. And, yeah. and then I just took the air file and flattened it down. But now there's like all these spaces in here and everything. So I'm gonna take the DA and just go all under here and maybe up into here a little bit too. And hopefully uh, we can just slap some Bondo on there and eventually build it up. Is that your car? No. It's a neighbor. You're like anchoring it down. Well, as it starts to dry, I'll be able to manipulate it more. It's just currently kind of fast. All right, guys. Well, we are just about wrapping it up here today. Uh, basically, I need to get here today to be able to drop off some extra stuff. And so that way we get a little bit of uh, work done on Chris's car. Uh, we pretty much did all that we could on that car for now, uh, just because we are waiting on a clutch before we put everything back together. And then we can put everything back in the car. Um, I did some work on this. Pretty much what I wanted to do anyways was just this, and I just applied it, and we're gonna have to wait for it to dry anyways. So basically, I'm gonna wait until next time where we can add even more on the backside here. Uh, I was basically just building up a little bit of a lip here. That way I can build it from the backside so it's actually uh, a little bit stronger. And then uh, we'll be able to take it down and be able to make it even all the way across here because that is the main point of doing it is because we do need to build up the corners because it is a little bit thicker towards the middle. Um, pretty much other than that, I mean, what else did we do? Basically, we found out the Vic windshield is still just as much of a pain in the ass to get out and that we're probably gonna go to Harbor Freight and get one of those things and see if that'll work. Um, they have like a glass remover, see if it is. I, I don't know, I think it's like 15 bucks or something like that. Uh, anyways, 
um, we explained uh, quite a few things that I think that I didn't really think were big questions, but I think uh, you asking helped a little bit. Um, other than that, we got to see my new battery charger in action. Uh, that thing's pretty cool. Again, I'm gonna put the link in the description of where I got that. Super helpful, and it's really not that expensive either. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be it for today. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out.